In this video, we're going to talk about 15 tips and tricks that will save you a ton of time and gold by preventing you from making mistakes and having to respec and explain some of the not straightforward interactions you can have in Diablo 4. Let's get started. Number one, if you've ever run into a whispering chest, you might have wondered where the heck do I find the key for this whispering chest? Well, you can actually buy whispering keys, which open whispering chests from the purveyor of curiosities. Now, the purveyor of curiosities is basically the gambling mechanic in Diablo 4 and the currency used to buy things from them are obols, and obols are collected from doing world events, different things like that. And in order to buy those whispering keys, you have to pay obols. So that is how you're going to get those whispering chests, and whispering chests basically are a random spawn. Wherever there would be a chest normally, there's a chance for it to be a whispering chest. So you want to always carry some whispering keys with you so you can get access to those chests, which of course are going to have better options than just normal chests. Okay, moving on to number two. Artillery shrines, which is a type of shrine you can find, will give you a different bonus based on the skill you're using. For example, regular attacks are going to be a straight linear AoE attack, but AoE attacks will make the artillery shrine fire off in an AoE. Now, for example, if you're a necromancer and you're using your basic skill, bone splinters, that's going to be a linear attack. But if you use corpse explosion, this is going to change the artillery shrine attack to be AoE. Same thing for like a shout or something. It's going to fire that off in a explosive every direction AoE. So depending on what ability you use, artillery shrine are going to change depending on that ability. All right, let's move on to number three. Let's talk about elixirs. Now, elixirs are really, really strong in Diablo 4. For example, elixir of demon slaying increases your damage by 20% against goat men, fallen, and flies, in addition to the 5% XP boost. Now, other elixirs like elixir of cold resist can also be very helpful against certain bosses or dungeons. There are so many different elixirs that are available in Diablo 4, and you always want to have an elixir on because of that 5% XP boost, but also because they have such powerful bonuses. So make sure, go craft them. They're not that hard. Check out the reagents you need when you go to the alchemist. Always be using an elixir on your character. All right, moving on to number four. Damage over time effects cannot critically strike. This is very important because some players are thinking, you know, oh, let's go this poison build or like this decay build, you know, where it does damage over time. Well, it's important to understand that if you do go that build, and I'm not saying that they're, you know, terrible builds or anything, just know that you don't want to get critical strike because damage over time effects cannot critically strike in Diablo 4. And so keeping that in mind as you build your character a certain way, that if you are doing damage over time and that is a big focus of your character, do not also get critical strike chance or bonus critical strike damage because it will be completely useless. Okay, moving on to number five. Legendary affixes from weapons you aren't using currently but are equipped will still provide their bonus, like a rogue using a melee weapon but benefiting from the crossbows affix or a barbarian using their one-handed weapons but benefiting from their two-hander. This is a huge, amazing buff for both rogues and barbarians. Weapons that are not in use are still giving their bonus to the other weapon that is in use. So basically, this gives rogues and barbarians access to more legendary affixes than any other class, and they're going to be benefiting them even when that weapon is not being used. So keep that in mind. It's, it's absolutely amazing. You can basically be a melee rogue and just have a crossbow or a bow be your stat stick, so to speak, giving you bonuses to your melee attack. So very, very cool. Not very straightforward to know that, but that is how that functions. All right, tip number six. Higher world tiers grant much more experience from killing monsters. Now, this makes a lot of sense logically, but you, know, you might not realize it. So if you're trying to get more experience level up faster, increase the difficulty. Now, in the beginning, you can choose world tier one or world tier two off the bat, but once you unlock world tier three, time to move on and you're going to get much more experience and gold by killing these more difficult monsters. All right, tip number seven. Close enemies are those who are in melee range. Distant enemies are outside of melee range. The tooltips don't say this, but there are a lot of different skills that actually will give you bonuses depending on the range. So in also item affixes. So for example, there'll be a skill that says your critical strike chance is increased by 9% against close enemies. So that is perfect for a melee build. But if you're playing ranged, then obviously you don't want that skill and vice versa. You know, like if there's something that gives you defense when taking damage in close range, then that means, you know, that once again, you're building a melee build. So keep that in mind. That is what close and distant mean in Diablo 4. All right, tip number eight, blood marked players are considered 
elites. Now, blood mark players are the players in PvP that are basically dominating. They're getting uh, basically alerted that they're a high priority target. They get rewarded if they can stay blood marked for a certain amount of time. And for the purposes of their monster type, they're considered elites. There are spirit boons that give you 10% reduced damage when getting hit by an elite monster. So a blood marked player would become an elite and deal 10% less damage to you. There are certain legendary aspects that make it so you do more damage to elites and so on. So keep that in mind in PvP that when there's certain affixes that apply to elites, it's also going to apply to blood marked players. All right, moving on to number nine. Shrines you see around the world with inscriptions will tell you which emote to do in front of it and reward you with a temporary bonus like 10% move speed. Now it's sort of obvious, but not too clear. Basically, if you see like a purple circle on the ground in a shrine, just walk up to that shrine. It'll say something like the words on this shrine are barely legible, but it says something like dot, 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 taunt dot 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 you know and so you basically depending on if you're on computer or console if you're on the computer hit e find that emote taunt and then use it while standing in that purple circle the shrine will give you a bonus whether that's 10 percent move speed 10 percent more damage or whatever whether it's a good use of your time i think probably not unless you already have all the emotes ready to go uh but just in case you see those shrines and you don't know what they're for that's what they do and that's how you can take advantage of them all right moving on to step number 10 injured the injured effect is when you have below 35% health. So that's just another tip there where you may not have known what does injured even mean. That also applies to your enemies as well. All right, tip number 11. All attacks have a 3% chance to overpower. That's for everyone. And also this chance can't be improved but some skills have guaranteed ways to overpower. It's very relevant for Pulverized Druid, where Pulverize will overpower every 10 seconds. And again, overpower is the bonus damage done to a monster with your total life with the sum of your fortified life. It's a really great way to do a lot of bonus damage if you're playing a class that's very tanky. All right, moving on to tip number 12. Now, you might have seen a healing well and you thought, oh, I'm at full health. I don't need to click on this. Well, healing wells don't only just restore your health. They also restore all all of your potion charges. So if you've been taking a lot of damage and you're working through world tier three or four and you're kind of low on potion charges, but you're at full health, click that healing well to restock all of your potion charges. You're welcome. Little tip for you right there. All right, tip number 13. Unstoppable and immune will remove all crowd control abilities such as fear, stun, and slow. So you, it's not something that you have to cast before it happens. You can actually use something that makes you unstoppable in order to escape. You know, this is really important for boss fights where, for example, the blood bishop might have grabbed you. You can actually use Trample, for example, to escape this sort of immobilize effect, which will make you unstoppable. Shadow Step is the same thing for rogues. I believe Teleport's the same for Sorcerer. So keep an eye on which abilities you have that can make you unstoppable. Keep those ready to use when you start being crowd controlled by a boss or other dangerous monster. All right, tip number 14, the state of sanctuaries based on the party leader's progress. This is important if you're trying to progress through the game, unlock different strongholds, etc. And someone sends you a party party invite. So don't just accept party invites without thinking. Maybe it's not the right time to group up if you're trying to uh, accomplish something content wise that the party leader may already have done or vice versa. If you're trying to access a dungeon and you haven't cleared a stronghold yet, which will unlock that dungeon, you can just accept that party invite and go straight to that dungeon without having to clear it yourself. So keep that in mind. And tip number 15, the final tip, crowd control abilities used on bosses increase their stagger bar. Once the bar is filled, the boss enters a weakened state. Basically, crowd control doesn't work, but it's not entirely useless. That weakened state can absolutely be worth it, and it makes it so that you don't have to avoid crowd control in your build. It's still getting some utility, even against a single target like a boss that won't get CC'd, but you can fill up that stagger bar, and it'll be right below their health bar at the top of the screen. You can see that filling up. Once it's full, they're going to go into a weakened state, making that crowd control actually worth it. And those are the 15 tips. If you learned something new, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Diablo 4 content. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.